UFC Fight Night, Amanda Lamoche versus Jessica Andrade. I got to be real with you guys. This fight card is so bad that I'm not even doing a breakdown episode on this fight card, guys. All right, I'm out. It's another day, yeah. left jab, right jab, this is MMA, MMA. Mixed martial arts, quick body parts, undefeated when I pick a mood of champ Who the victim looking in my crystal ball, I predict the winner yeah. Never stop fighting, if you lose, keep your chin up keep your chin Know up. how the game go, I'm a small fella uh -huh. Welcome to the show, this the MMA fortune teller yeah. The MMA fortune, MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What is up, you guys? Teller checking in. Uh, obviously, I was just poking some fun there. You guys know we do not skip any UFC fight card breakdowns. Every single event will be covered here. Now, I do apologize for this this episode coming out a little bit later. Um, I, I've been traveling and I've had some things going on here in my personal life, but. Uh, if there was a fight card for these things to be going on uh, leading up to the card, this is the fight card because it is a horrendous card. It's a very bad card. If we're giving it a letter uh, grading, I'm giving it an F. I'm giving this fight card an F. But again, I'll still say what I always say. I'm still excited for this fight card and I'm still going to watch every single fight and I'm going to find my spots to make some money. It is what it is. So, uh, I mean, we take a quick look and if you guys see what we're talking about here, um, I mean, Lamoche versus Andrade, it's somewhat of an intriguing matchup. Uh, I mean, you got the, the, the strawweight matchup there in the main event. Guida versus Puelas as a co-main event. You guys know I was just chilling with, with Clay Guida doing some shots not too long ago. We'll pull that video back up. Uh, nothing but love to Guida, but uh, Guida up in his 40s at a co-main event sp slot against Puelas, who's still very unproven. Uh, Romanov and Sherman gets thrown together at the last second. Uh, I mean... Throughout this entire card, you've got fighters that have are that are coming off long layoffs. Uh, Ser Sergey uh, Kanzoko is coming back. Uh, you got fighters like Tyson Pedro, who's, who's been out for a long time battling injuries. Um, uh, you got Mike Jackson uh, kicking things on here, kicking things off. Excuse me, Mike Jackson. If you guys remember him, uh, the, the comical figure who who took on CM Punk. All right, you guys. If you want to argue the 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 letter F grading for this fight card, I'll be more than willing to uh, to meet you guys in the comment section. Hit me up in the comment section. If you guys disagree, if you want to argue that this is a D-minus fight card or whatever you think it is, let me know. Uh, all right, I, I won't rant too much more about that. We're going to be breaking down every single fight here. Um, you guys, real quick update. I have the studio. I'm, I'm working on that, man. It's going to take some weeks to get everything going in there, but I'm going to keep you guys up to date, especially on my Instagram. Uh, I'll be giving you guys uh, videos uh, in my story of how everything's coming along. Once this thing's all set up, you guys are going to be, um, you guys are going to be impressed for, for what I put together as, as far as in the studio, man. So big things coming, great content coming to you guys. All these breakdown videos will be coming out way earlier moving forward. You'll be having these, these prediction videos coming out a week in advance moving forward. So no more waiting around, uh, wondering where the video is at. So again, just bear with me as we get through these next couple weeks and then big things coming. All right, guys, I wanted to touch upon that real quick. Um, now we do a little recap. Uh, we, we do a little recap of this past weekend's fight card. Of course, we had Vicente Luque and Bilal Muhammad in the rematch. And uh, I hit two of my three official plays. I'll let you guys know how we do or how we did overall there. Let's get into that fight card. All right. So as we make our way over to the recap of Luque versus Muhammad, I do promise you guys I'll make this quick. I know it's been some days since these fights actually took place. And a lot of you guys probably don't even care to hear about this card. It wasn't the greatest card either. Um... But we do hit two of our three official plays. It was basically a stalemate, though. We'll get into the plays here. Haley Alatang takes out Kevin Kroom. This was the first official play of mine on this card. Uh, I like Alatang. He has the wrestling in his back pocket. His striking's coming around. Kevin Kroom is making a devastating weight cut. Uh, he's just a little bit too too long and skinny, man, for for, the, for that cut. He was already a, a thin fighter up a weight class. 
coming down. I wasn't a fan of that cut. And uh, to be quite honest, I'm not really too high on Kevin Kroom's uh, skills as far as being a UFC fighter. Uh, and you guys know I got nothing but respect and love for him, but uh, it is what it is. So we capitalized there. We hit that play. Um, after that, Sam Hughes gets the victory over Estela Nunez. Uh, Jordan Levette gets the split decision victory over Trey Ogden. Uh, Martin Boudet uh, gets the victory over Chris Barnett. This was a little bit of a weird one, right? Um, I'm going to have a video coming out in the near future uh, going into this specific situation. We've been seeing it happening happening a lot. Uh, it's, it's a very strange situation. Uh, Boudet lands an illegal shot and the fight gets stopped there and he gets to win the fight. It's kind of weird how that all transpires. Of course, you remember when Piotr Jan did that against Aljamain Sterling in the first fight, uh, he loses his belt. Uh, so, so something seems to be a little off there. Uh, and that was kind of a theme of, of last weekend's fights, right? Even going to the Bellator fight card, uh, we were seeing a lot of weird stuff taking place. Um, Rafa Garcia gets the, the victory over Jesse Ronson. Uh, after getting a point taken away uh, for, for the illegal knee there, he ends up uh, pushing pushing strong there and getting the rear naked choke over Jesse Ronson, who was coming off a long layoff with the suspension. Um, it wasn't necessarily a good look for Jesse. He couldn't get Garcia off of him and uh, couldn't keep the distance with, with his footwork. Uh, Drakkar Close gets the knockout over Brandon Jenkins. Uh, this was the first leg of a parlay of mine. We had a two-teamer here. I just felt very confident in Drakkar Close getting the job done. I don't think Brandon Jenkins is a UFC caliber fighter. I think Close is a very underrated fighter. And uh, obviously, he's he uh, just had a big win there because even though Jenkins isn't the biggest of names, Close has been battling some things here. Got knocked out by Dariush. Uh, then he got knocked out by Jeremy Stevens at the weigh-in. So it was tough. It was tough for him. Uh, and he went in there and he handled business. Uh, Panny Kianzad gets the victory over Lena Landsberg. Devin Clark gets the victory over William Knight. Big, big time victory for Devin Clark there. Um, I'm happy to see that for him. He's a good dude. Uh, Menor Lazes uh, gets the victory over Angelusa. This was a very, very fun fight to watch. It was an absolute striking match. These guys were going tit for tat. But Lazes is a very talented striker. He was really... Um, controlling the range of this fight. He was using his, his distance with his uh, his reach advantage that he had. But much respect to Lusa as well, coming in on short notice after just fighting weeks, days really before. And uh, now Lusa will have an opportunity to fight in the UFC in the near future. You know how the UFC takes care of fighters that take that that short notice fight like that. So I think Lusa has an opportunity, you know, training over there with Sanford MMA, training with all those top level guys. I think that he can have a full fight camp for a fight, he can get a victory against some UFC caliber fighters, and I think he has potential to hang around. We'll see. We'll see how that goes for him. Uh, Pat Sabatini was the second uh, of the the two legger there, uh, and that was a five unit play that I grabbed at minus two hundred combined uh, of Close and Sabatini. I just felt so confident about both these guys coming through, so I had to jump on that two team parlay there. And uh, Sabatini, a little bit of a slow start, but you guys see what he's about. His grappling and his cardio is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, it's almost reminiscent to, to Khabib. And I know, of course, you guys are going to say, oh, don't do that. But I'm just just throwing that out there. It's not exactly the same. But the way he controls uh, the back of these these fighters against the cage and does not let them up, the way he, he hooks his leg in, uh, I really like the work he does there. I love the cardio. It's almost reminiscent to Colby Covington. This guy wasn't even breathing heavy after going three rounds like that. Uh, keep an eye on, on Sabatini. The striking needs to come around more so. And uh, I think TJ Laramie will bounce back if, if the UFC gives him an opportunity. He started off good. Sabatini's a beast. Uh, Myra Bueno Silva gets the victory over Yan and Wu uh, in a decently close fight. Andre Fialo gets the knockout over Miguel Baeza. Now, remember, we talked about this. I know I did pick Baeza to win the fight here. I said it was a very close fight, but you guys know we talked about the very real potential of, of Fialo to get a knockout here. He has serious knockout power, and we were questioning the chin of Baeza. He's such a talented fighter. We saw Baeza land a nasty strike as well. He's a very talented striker, but the chin, the chin of Baeza, we saw him get dropped on Dana White's Contender Series when he was on the show there. Uh, we've seen him getting knocked out as of recently. Um, it's It's been a little bit of a tough road for Baeza as of recently. You really got to wonder where he's going to be at moving forward. Uh, uh, Kyle, Gets the big victory over Gadshi here uh, in the the, uh, the co-main event here. Um, and this was another fight where we saw the illegal strike landed and the fight ended. But you know what, man? Uh, Kao, excuse me here for not saying his name properly. Kao uh, was not going to lose this fight. He was dominating it. Uh, big, big respect for him for this victory. This is a guy we keep an eye on moving forward. This was a big victory here. Gadshi is no joke. And he was out grappling him, uh, controlling his back. I mean, this was a big-time victory. Uh, he could strike. He could do it all. And... Um, 
that that was a big victory. We keep an eye on him moving forward. He's now 11-1. and one. And then that takes us to the main event here. Bilal Muhammad pulls off that upset on Vicente Luque. You guys know this was my third and final play here. Um, I, I was very, very shocked to see that Luque was getting taken down the way that he was right in the middle of the cage with those straight line takedowns. I can't believe uh, Luque didn't stuff them. He has a long track record of having very good takedown defense. Um, you know, some people were mentioning a specific fight where he didn't have the best uh, showcasing of his takedown defense. But overall, Luque has been very, very above average in, in that department. I was very surprised. I know Muhammad's very physically strong, has been looking great as of recently. Um, but that, that should have been Luque's fight, man. And uh, But you know what? We give respect um, not to Muhammad because I'm not a fan of his. Uh, just poking some fun there. You guys know Muhammad blocked me, and I'm, I'm waiting for him to get knocked out again so he could poke some fun. It seems to be a common theme of a lot of you guys. Uh, everyone's going after Bilal Muhammad these days. Uh, but again, it's all in fun. Hope it doesn't rub some of you guys the wrong way. I'm just joking here. In reality, respect to Muhammad. Uh, he's, a, he's a tough dude, and he's been grinding and, and becoming a better version of himself. We saw the footwork that he was using in this fight. He had a great game plan, and he got the job done and uh, uh, kind of screwed my night, up, my night up there. It would have been a three-for-three three perfect night, which is what I wanted, and we ended up basically hitting a stalemate there. So um, that's the recap of that fight card. And now we move forward Oh, to this... Uh, this very exciting fight card. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So bear with me. In the first fight of the card, we got Dean Barry taking on Mike Jackson. Of course, a lot of you guys remember Mike Jackson from when he put on that whooping on CM Punk about four years ago. Uh, but let's be clear. CM Punk is a... Uh, how do I even word this? We're not talking about a below-level UFC fighter. He's a below-level fighter walking around on planet earth i think that at least 30 to 40 percent of you guys watching this video could probably whoop cm punk uh and i literally literally mean that i'm sure a lot of you guys have uh, some type of training that are watching this maybe you bumped in to your local mma gym or you guys you know you shadow box in your garage i think a lot of you guys can take out cm punk so uh there's really no stock in that if you guys remember that fight he was kind of toying with him and messing with him the ufc never gave him another opportunity after that fight they were not pleased dana white was very upset with him uh, if you guys remember the uh the post fight press conference that, that Dana White did after that fight. Um, I mean, yes, he knows some stuff. I mean, this, this isn't a fighter that just doesn't uh, know how to fight at all and just got thrown into the UFC. Uh, yeah, he's a guy that has some type of training. I think he's an MMA journalist as well, uh, but he's not a fighter that's on the level here. Let's be clear. Um, and I'm kind of interested why he's getting an opportunity here. He's fighting this guy, Dean Barry, who I want to be clear, I'm not high on his his uh, his, his fighting at all either. When you break down the tape on this guy, this guy throws punches from his hips. The technique is way off. I haven't been impressed at all. I know he's coming off three knockout victories in a row, but I mean, if you look at the level of fighters he's fighting and his last fight uh, over in Titan FC, he fights a guy that's six and 30 as a pro. Um, this fight just seems to be a very strange one. We'll see how it, how it takes place, how it goes. I really do hope that Dean Barry puts a whooping on Mike Jackson. I've been wanting to see that happen ever since uh, he was in there mocking CM Punk, kind of messing around and not going for the finish in that fight. It kind of annoyed me as well. Um, Jackson will have the, the length advantage in this fight, the height and reach advantage. He's a rangy guy, uh, doesn't have much muscle mass to him. He's light on his feet. He's comfortable in there. He's very relaxed. But I think that Dean Barry, you know, he does have some kicks. And, and I think at the end of the day, uh, Dean Barry will, uh, will get the job done. And potentially we see a finish here. I mean, um, I mean, when you see a line like this, Maybe I'm missing something. I think this line's a little bit off at minus 1,200. I think it's a little ridiculous, but uh, people look at Mike Jackson like he just has no business being in, in the UFC, which is true, but does Dean Barry have much business being in the UFC right now? Um, you know, I'm not so sure about that as well, but uh, he has some decent striking, and we'll see if he can get a finish here against Mike Jackson. Uh, that's what I'm hoping to see. All right, next fight taking place in the light heavyweight division. This is not taking place in the heavyweight division. Felipe Linz looks to make a move down in weight class here which I think could be the right move for him uh, if he does the cut properly. We'll see how that goes. Pay attention to that this fight week. Uh, he's taking on Marcin Pracnio. Uh, this is a good stylistic matchup for him. Pracnio has shown uh, to to be vulnerable to getting hit on the feet and getting put out. We've seen him look like um, like crap before on the feet. If you remember that that knockout loss against Sam Alvey, he completely walked forward with his, his face right there, just giving him a gift to get knocked out. It was one of the more awkward things I've seen in the UFC. Which again, another another fitting thing to talk about uh, based on uh, uh, that connects to this fight card. These fighters, you know, we're talking about guys that I'm not even really sure are UFC caliber. Uh, now, Marcin Pracnio did just win two fights in a row. He took out Ike Villanueva, which we'll get to later. He's fighting on this fight card, and that's another guy. Um, 
Before that, though, he did get a legit victory over Khalil Roundtree. We've seen Pracnio be able to push the pace a little bit in some of his fights. If you run tape back on him, uh, he comes in, de in decent shape. Um, six foot three with the 74 inch reach here uh, with the comeback on Linz at six foot two with the 78 inch reach. We have four inch uh, reach advantage for Felipe Linz. Linz is a guy that favors his boxing. Uh, he has some decent hands. We've seen him, uh, you know, we've seen him crack a little bit in some of his fights. Um, I think there's potential for him to get a knockout in this fight, but it's a very, very shaky fight uh, to be betting on. Uh, you know, if you see Pracnio uh, in this picture here, man, he's got some real power uh, as you see him running straight through the concrete blocks. Um, you know, but but uh, the way I look at this fight here, uh, it's a very shaky fight. I think that, like I said, Felipe Linz has legit potential to get the knockout in this fight. If he doesn't and Pracnio could survive and... Um, kind of do his thing with his footwork and make this an ugly type of sloppy fight. I could see him being in better shape, maybe sneaking in, sneaking in a takedown or two, pushing Linz against the cage, making it ugly and, and getting a decision victory. Um, and now Linz is coming off that knockout loss against Tanner Bozier and that the loss against Andre Orlovsky, where Orlovsky kind of did his thing, you know, used his footwork. Uh, Tanner Bozier is a solid UFC fighter, UFC heavyweight fighter. So keep that in mind uh, with Pracnio, like I said, getting his last victory uh, via knockout over Ike Villanueva. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. But uh, we, we take a look at the live line right now. And we're talking about a line of... see here. We're talking about a live line of minus 125 with the comeback of plus 105 on Linz. So Linz is the slight dog here. I think it's a complete coin flip. And uh, if you're going to give me... Linz at plus 105 uh, when I'm having to pick one of these fighters. I'm going to go with Linz, but I think this is a very dangerous fight if you're looking to target this fight with, with legit money. Um, I think you're really uh, putting a blindfold on and, and you're swinging a bat in, in, in the dark there. You can't see what you're really going to get. Um, so I would recommend to stay away from this fight, but I'm looking for Linz to get a knockout there. We'll see how that fight plays out. Taking place in the bantamweight division, we got Kuling Aori taking on Cameron Else. Uh, now, Cameron Else did lose his UFC debut about a year and a half ago. Uh, that, that was a very tough fight that, that he had against Kyler Phillips. Uh, we know that Kyler Phillips is a very legit fighter. Um, we're talking about uh, a guy that is a top 15 fighter in the division. So no real shame in that fight. I mean, he, he was outclassed. Uh, but the problem that I have with Else is when you really run through his resume, he's made a career fighting guys that are uh, that are very below average. I mean, he has an extremely padded record. Um, I mean, there, there's some major, major question marks with him. He's still 10 and five as well. Even with that padded resume that he has, he's still 10 and five. You know, he's winning two out of every three fights and um, he has losses to guys that are very questionable. So, um, I mean, I, I don't feel very confident in him being a UFC caliber fighter, to be quite honest. This is another guy that I don't think really hangs around in the UFC. Uh, where on the other hand, uh, at least Aori, you know, he just lost two fights in a row, but I mean, he has 31 professional fights. Those two fights that he just lost were, were entertaining, uh, toughly contested matchups against uh, high level opponents. Jeff Molina, I, I think he's a solid fighter of uh, the glory M uh, MMA fitness product uh, un under James Krause there. And then uh, against Cody Durden, I know Cody just got finished uh, very early in that fight, but you guys know he's fighting an absolute stud, a, a kid that may be the the youngest champion ever in the UFC so don't hold him to the fire there uh Cody Durden has good boxing he's a tough fighter and that was a that was a fun fight that was a, a tough fight there uh Ayori um you know two inches shorter in this fight uh, almost two inches at a disadvantage with the reach I'm just really not too worried about it um I know else has been putting in some work over at the BMF ranch uh, with Cowboy and all those guys and whatnot and I know he's trying to become a better version of himself, but I have no faith in him. I think that uh, Ayori uh, will get the better of him on the feet. Um, I think he gets the better of him everywhere. I think wherever this fight goes, I have, I have a pretty good amount of confidence that Ayori gets the job done, however it, it gets done. Um, I, I got to see something more from else to to be on him uh, in any fight in the UFC, which is just realistically probably not going to happen. Uh, I pull up the live line on this fight right now, and uh, we're looking at a live line of... Right, right around minus 225 up to the minus 250 range on, on uh, Ayori. So he's a decent favorite here. Um, I think the line's pretty accurate. Uh, it's, a, it's a high line, but it's not ridiculous. But I mean, what is else going to bring to the table here? We'll see. We need to see major improvements if this fight's even going to play out closely or if he pulls something wild off. I got Ayori to win the fight. Tyson Pedro makes his return to the octagon. It's been a while now. 
uh, almost three and a half years since he last got knocked out by Mauricio Shogun Hua. Uh, that was a fight where he definitely made a, a big time mistake in there. Uh, got a little wild in, in that fight. And that's something that he's done uh, throughout his career, actually. A lot of his losses came uh, via him just acting a fool in there. I mean, this, he does have legit talent. He's a tough dude. Uh, nice frame for the division, six foot three with the 79, 79 inch reach. Uh, still only 30 years old. Um, of course, the major question mark here is uh, the, the layoff, uh, you know, the, the octagon rust, as they like to call it. I mean, uh, how is he going to look here? Well, you know, I do have great news for him. His opponent is Ike Villanueva, Ike the Hurricane Villanueva, which no disrespect. I, I'm sure he's a, or I know he's an extremely tough guy. Uh, he's just not a UFC caliber fighter. There's no question about it. Now he brings the fight. He continues to always bring the fight, and that's why the UFC does respect that, uh, respect him for that, and they constantly give him opportunities. And um, how about this? You know, if if, if Ike Villanueva uh, wasn't enough for you, we got an Ike Villanueva Jr. hitting the mats over there, man. Shout out to uh, Ike Jr. Uh, hopefully, he did work over there at the, the state wrestling tournament. Tournament, um, you know, good stuff. He's with his uncle over there. I'm assuming that's obviously Ike Villanueva's brother, or or whatever, his brother-in-law. Uh, but but shout out to Ike Villanueva. By no means am I trying to throw shade at him here. Again, I just don't feel that he's a UFC caliber fighter. Uh, athletically, I think Pedro's going to be a major step ahead. Physically, athletically, um, almost anywhere you want to go here. Um, and, and I think that Pedro jumps back into the UFC, gets a big victory. I think he gets a first round knockout here, potentially a first or second round knockout. I'll go first round. I, I do. I think that maybe he hits Villanueva with a body shot, something similar to what we just saw uh, recently, actually, right? Oh, two fights ago, or Pracnio hit him with that body kick. Uh, when you're, when you're getting finished by Pracnio, uh, in the UFC, man, uh, I'm not really sure if you should be fighting in the octagon, but again, he's getting another opportunity here. He's 18 and 13 as a pro. And uh, although Pedro only has 10 professional fights, he's coming off the long layoff, and you see he's only won one of his last four fights. Remember now, losses to Alir Latifi, OSP, and Mauricio Shogun Rua. It, it is what it is. They were all learning experience for Pedro. His last victory was over Sap, uh, Saperberg, Safarov, and uh, before that against Paul Craig, where he did work down on the mat. Uh, he does have some devastating uh, ground and pound as well. So don't be shocked. Maybe he drags Ike Villanueva down to the mat early and, and does a, puts a beating on him down there as well. Let's throw that out there too. But I'm going finish. I'm going finish for Pedro. And uh, we're looking at a line here of right now, Pedro's up to the minus 650 uh, betting line here as a favorite and with the comeback on Villanueva at a plus 425, plus 400. Um, you know, Villanueva right now 38 years old. There's a lot of stuff going against him here. He has his back against the wall. And uh, his victory, his last victory was over Vinicius Mojera, the, the talented BJJ player who was really not a UFC caliber fighter. A common theme here. Um, and, and he did crack him with the shot there. I don't think that Ike's going to be cracking Tyson with the shot in this fight and really putting him in danger, in my opinion. Uh, I got Pedro to win the fight. Dwight Grant taking on Sergey Kondozoko, a Honda. A guy, again, that's coming off a long layoff. His last fight was two and a half years ago. Uh, and a loss against Russ Team Kabilov. Uh, speaking of Kabilov, you guys remember Kabilov? He hasn't fought in a long time. I think that was his last fight as well. Kabilov was a guy that, uh, you know, he was going in there tossing guys around, slamming dudes on their head at one point in time. People were very high on him. Um, he had some tough losses as well, but he was a talented fighter. Um, now, in that fight, he was constantly hanging on Sergey, uh, trying to do what he always does, which is use his grappling. And you know what? Sergey did show to have good takedown defense or good, a good get-up game. He was constantly going back to the cage, working his way up or jumping right back up. So I give him credit there. I don't think that Sergey is a guy that you have to worry about being smothered or, or uh, completely controlled down on the mat. Um, he's a guy that favors his striking, but if I'm being quite honest, it's not really uh, the best uh, he likes to work the leg kicks a lot. I know he, he's put in some work over at Tiger Muay Thai. I'm not a big fan of his boxing. He has a decent check hook, a decent left check hook. Um, but, you know, if, if you run the tape back on his fight against uh, Rostim Akman, uh, a lot of swing and misses there, a lot of opportunities where he could have landed some big shots and he wasn't. Uh, he did end up prevailing in that fight, got the job done, but I wasn't necessarily impressed. And he got tagged up a little bit early in the, in the first round there. Um some questionable losses throughout his career as well. If you, if you look into those six losses, you take a look at some of the guys he's lost to. Uh, I mean, this isn't some 
some high caliber Russian type fighter, even though he has a, a lot of experience as a pro. Uh, he's a decent fighter. Um, Dwight Grant, on the other hand, this is a guy that, um, you know, not a lot of, of MMA experience. I mean, a decent amount, I guess, I guess at this point, 15 pro fights, uh, which is going to be substantially less. Uh, he's a guy that has a good reach. Uh, he, he constantly comes in these fights with that long, that long reach. Uh, that he uses with his footwork. He's an unorthodox type of fighter, man. He's a guy that's he's hard to get a read on. He has that awkward motion. Uh, he'll he'll throw some some power into his shots, man. When you break down tape on him, uh, he looks to crack. He's an aggressive guy. Even when he's on the back foot and he's circling, when he when he comes in with his shots, he really steps in. And um, I wouldn't be shocked if he he puts a hard shot right on on Honda's nose there, and we see some blood. I mean, he has some decent power. We saw him uh, drop. Uh, Daniel Rodriguez, if you guys remember that, I had some money on that fight and uh, I was jumping out of my seat. I thought I was going to cash a dog ticket there at the time. And um, he, he ended up not being able to put Rodriguez away. And then Rodriguez came back and got the finish there. Um, after that, he had the split decision victory over uh, uh, Sikulic. And uh, then in his last fight, he had that split decision loss against Trinaldo. They kind of went tit for tat there. Um, this is a fight that I've been back and forth on, if I'm being quite honest, um, especially when I pulled up uh, Dwight Grant in the Vegeta outfit on his IG. I mean, this this got me pretty hyped up. Um, Vegeta was my favorite Dragon Ball Z character back in the day when I was a young kid. Um, but the fact that he's still rocking the outfit like this up, up <laughs> at the age that he's at, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. Uh, you know, to be honest, man, Grant looks like he, he's a cool dude. He's a, a fun dude here. Um, I think this is an extremely close fight. But you know what? Um I am going to take Honda here. I think it's an extremely close fight. Um, I've seen that Honda has been in the States now for over a month. He's been putting in some great work over at Extreme Couture, uh, brushing shoulders with all types all types of guys, legit talent. And uh, I think that he's acclimate, acclimated here here in the States. He's, he's ready to go. He's settled in. And um, look look for Honda to really work the leg kicks. I think that Grant leaves that, that front leg out there a little bit much, and I could see Honda landing some good leg kicks there. Maybe hits a, a Grant with a couple counter shots. Um, this is a very close fight, uh, but, I, but I'm leaning Honda here, and uh, we'll pull up the live line, and, and we're looking at a, a live line right now, uh, right, right around the minus 125 range, I would say, throughout the books. Minus 120 to minus 125 range uh, with the comeback on Grant right around a plus 105. Uh, almost even odds on him there. And uh, this is a very close fight. Uh, it's a tough one. I'll, I'll go with Sergey uh, Kanda Zoko here uh, to win the fight. We'll see how he performs. We got a catchweight fight here at 190 pounds. Mark Andre Berriut taking on Jordan Wright. Now, Mark Andre is coming off a very tough loss. I know everyone's been talking about it. It was only two months ago where he got starched by Chidi and Jukwani. That was a very tough loss for him because he was basically on a three fight winning streak. Um, I know one of them was overturned, but uh, three fights in a row where he was putting in work there. Uh, I call that those three victories in a row. I think if you, we remember that fight was overturned for um, a strange reason. But either way, he went in there and he starched uh, Oscar Pichota. Um, so he really had some moment momentum there going into that GD fight. He was putting in work over there at Sanford MMA, which he still is now. Um, this is a very quick comeback. Uh, we're talking about two months, and he, if you run the tape back on that that knockout loss against Chidi, he was definitely put out. Um, he was put out uh, very quickly in that fight, and he, he kind of curled up against the cage. And I, I mean, he was basically unconscious. I, I, he was. He was basically unconscious. Uh, he was holding himself up, but he didn't know where he was. Uh, I'm surprised that, that uh, the, the commission and all that let him uh, come in here and fight so quickly. Um you know, I'm surprised that his management and his team let him come back and, uh, you know, get get matched up with a guy like Jordan Wright, who really brings the fight early, especially, uh, who looks to get a knockout. I'm surprised that they threw him in there uh, with only uh, two months surpassing since that knockout loss. Um, this was his last post. I found this a little bit interesting here on Instagram. Uh, the universe rewards those who refuse to give up, stay focused, disciplined, and committed to your vision. Your life should be like a train. You're always moving forward to your final destination and nothing can derail you. You must stay on the tracks to get to where you want to go. I respect that. Uh, but when it comes to the fight game, um, you know, there, there's certain things that you, that you need to do, man. And when your chin get, gets wrecked like that, I, I'm a believer that you need uh, for, for a knockout loss like that, I want at least six months off for my fighter personally. So I'm not a big fan 
uh, of the move of him jumping in here. Uh, but I get where he's coming from. He's probably so eager to get back into the wing column and, and get that momentum going again. I know that he's left his home. He's living in South Florida now, and he's been sacrificing so so many so many things that you know he wants to see the payoff. He wants to move his his way through the ranks. Uh, keep in mind, you know, he was a double champ over at TKO. If you guys remember that, uh, he was a double champ over at TKO, which is the, one of the premier. Uh, fight, fight promotions over there in Canada. A lot of big time names came over from Canada from from TKO, GSP, Mark Hominick, uh, the Who's Who from Canada. Uh, Mark Andre is a guy that that a lot of people had high hopes coming into the UFC, and uh, things did not start off good for him. Three losses in a row. He had that split with with Jocko, uh, but again, he had those three victories in a row, so it was three for three basically. Again, the the no contest there, but the knockout victory, um, and then he had that loss. So he needs a victory here. To, to be a 500 fighter in the UFC. We know his style. He looks to to push his fighters up against the cage, make it a grueling fight. He's been working on his striking as well, but but he really pre pressures his fighters or his opponents, presses them against the cage, uh, throws one-twos. It's just constantly moving forward. And, um, and then you got a, a guy in Jordan Wright, 30 years old right now, hitting the prime of his career. Um, I think he's a fighter that a lot of us thought was was kind of a joke at one point in time we remember him on dana white's contender series he gets starched there gets knocked out uh, in brutal fashion against anthony hernandez i do believe uh that fight also got overturned to a no contest i think due to marijuana uh but you know after that loss you've got to give respect to Wright. he, go, he comes back starts stringing off victories uh had two victories in a row over gabriel chico and ike villanueva uh you know, we, we don't put too much stock in the Villanueva knockout, obviously. Uh, but he did put some work in, in that fight. Ended up getting the nasty cut on Villanueva early in that fight. Uh, the the knockout loss that he took against Buckley, he hung around for a while, if you want to be realistic. A lot of people thought he was going to get starched in the first. He We saw that he was able to hang around. Then he had that big victory over Jamie Pickett, one of the more fun fights that I've ever seen. They went to war. Uh, and then he had the the knockout loss just recently to Bruno Silva, who Bruno Silva has shown to be an absolute knockout artist. So there's no real shame in that loss there. Um, Jordan Wright has nasty kicks. We know he has that traditional uh, karate style. Goes by the name of the Beverly Hills Ninja. It's legit. He's a legit uh, karate uh, player. I mean, he's a, a lifelong karate uh, you know, martial artist, and uh, he's been working that type of, of style uh, mixing it in with a, a modern day MMA style, and it's actually, it's actually been uh, sufficient for him at times. If you remember the elbows that he was raining, uh, I'm trying to remember who he was fighting. Uh, was it? It might have been Ike Villanueva. I'm trying to remember, uh, or if it was, it wasn't Jamie. It might have been Jamie Pickett. Actually, excuse me, it was the Jamie Pickett fight. I think Jamie pressed him up against the cage at one point in time, and uh, he was really able to drop these nasty elbows. Uh, that's downward elbows, those Travis Brown elbows. Um, you see him here. I mean, he's a legit athlete. He's coming into this fight the naturally larger man. I believe he has a two-inch height advantage here. We'll pull that up here. Um, two, oh, excuse me, a one-inch height advantage, uh, a four-inch reach advantage. He's the naturally larger man. I think he'll look better here at the catch weight of 190 pounds. I think he's he's going to fill into that weight better or he'll, he'll hold it better. Um you know, I worry about Mark Andre in the, in the initial transactions in this fight when these guys are going at it in those exchanges. Uh, I worry that his chin's not rested up and and we see him take some damage and get hurt. Um, there's legit potential for that. Now that being said, um, I do I do believe that Mark Andre get, gets the the victory here. I think that he could weather the storm here, uh, survive that early onslaught, and uh, he has potential also to clip right. We've seen right wobbled multiple times he does not have a solid chin it's a below average chin we could see mark andre possibly clip him or if if nothing really happens in the first half of this fight where someone's getting put out we see these guys settle in i think mark andre will be the stronger guy in the clinch and, and will be the guy pushing forward and he'll win a decision uh so i so i do pick mark andre uh Beirut to to win this fight and uh, right now you're looking at like a minus 170 line uh you know if if that last fight didn't just happen uh, against Chidi and Kawani, I think that Mark Andre would be a massive favorite here. Maybe not a massive favorite. We're talking about at least like a minus two fifty, minus uh, a minus two fifty up to the minus three hundred range. I think on Mark Andre, if that loss didn't just happen with Chidi and him coming in so quickly after taking that knockout, um, 
So just take that for for what it is. I, I like Mark Andre to get it done, but if he gets knocked out early in this fight, that's the way it's probably going to happen if he loses. And um, again, Jordan Wright's feisty, man. He's feisty. And uh, he has some kicks as well. All right, so we'll see how the fight takes place. Charles Jordan taking on Lando Venata. This is a good matchup here taking place in the featherweight division. Both guys that favor their striking. Um, if there's a grappling edge, I probably would lean more towards Lando's way. Uh, pretty impressive in that last fight against Mike Grundy. Stuffing those takedowns. We know Mike Grundy's a decorated wrestler. Uh, Lando really had no problem stuffing those takedowns and pulling that fight off. It was a split decision victory, but I think it should have been a unanimous decision. Um, and I was pulling for Grundy in that matchup, but I, I call it for what it is. Grundy did not win that fight. Um, you guys know the routine with Venata. Came into the UFC on short notice against Tony Ferguson, one of the greatest fights we've ever seen in absolute war. Uh, and since then, uh, he's been a guy that's been up and down. We remember the, the the nasty wheel kick knockout he had over, um, uh, what was that, that? Another Canadian, a very tough Canadian. Uh, I'm going to pull it up real quick, man. Um, the, the, he had that crazy victory over, and that was against John McDessie. Uh, and that was his bounce back fight after the Ferguson fight. So at that point in time, people were extremely high on him. Uh, but it's been a rocky road. Like I said, against David Tamor, he loses. Uh, the Tamor brothers disappeared on us. I was big fans of both those guys. Nasty Muay Thai fighters. Uh, the split decision loss over Bobby Green, which Bobby Green did end up getting uh, revenge and, and took the, the W in the, the second fight there. Lost to Jakar Close, Mark Diacasey. Uh, we talked about the green fight there. Victories over Mar Marcus Mariano, a guy that should have never fought in the UFC. Anderson Silva threw him on the card with him. Um, you know, not a lot of big victories. I mean, his biggest victory probably has to be the John McDessie knockout. Uh, the Yancey Medeiros, maybe when it's uh, Grundy. I don't know. Not a lot of big victories here, but he's been in there with some battle-tested fighters. So he has um, he has respect in, in, in that from that standpoint, we've seen him in there with legit fighters. Although he didn't prevail in those fights, we've seen him hanging around. We've seen fights that were very close to Matt Favola fight. I think that was a draw. Um, Lando is a tricky striker here. Uh, Charles Jordan, I like the fact that he's a little bit more technical with his striking. He's a little bit more uh, to the book. Uh, nice leg kicks, uh, polished striking defense. He doesn't get too wild. I think that that should give him a slight edge there as Venata gets a little groovy. I think that Jordan can can capitalize with, with the technical uh, striking that he has. Uh, Jordan, only 26 years old still, uh, coming off a victory against Andre Yule. He looked very good in that fight. And again, Jordan is another guy that's been up and down throughout his career. Um, I'm not going to go through all the ins and outs, but uh, you know, a guy that's been up and down throughout his career. And uh, still only 26, though. Four years younger than Venata. Still has a lot more time to to get things going here. Um, I think Jordan has more potential here. We, we know who Venata is. Jordan is a guy that still comes in uh, in some of his fights as a big-time favorite. Uh, not here, though. Uh, we'll pull up the live line. And uh, the live line right now is right around minus 120, minus 125. So people understand this is a close fight. I tend to agree this is a close fight here. I'm edging Jordan to win this fight, though, again. Uh, he's he's a a natural kickboxer. He's he's very technical and um, he sticks to the book. Like I said, a little bit more than Venata. Now, if Venata lands something wild and hurts Jordan, or maybe he looks to implement some some wrestling a takedown here and there. Um, maybe he shakes things up a little bit. Um, you know, maybe that's an X factor. But I see these guys going tit for tat on the feet, and I think that Jordan. Uh, just edges out Venata a little bit more so. We've seen Venata slow down a little bit in some of his fights as well, so you keep an eye on that. Uh, maybe Jordan's a little bit more fresh, and uh, I like Jordan to get the job done there, but it's, it is a close fight. Sue Madarji taking on Manil Cape. Uh, this is a good fight here in the flyweight division. Both fighters have legit potential uh, to work their way up through the rankings towards the top. Uh, remember now, Manil Cape had a slow start to, to the UFC. He lost two fights in a row uh, coming in. Uh, after being a somewhat of a star over in Japan, fighting some legit talent over there. Um, losses to Alexandra Pantoja and Matthias Nicolau, two guys that are uh, very, very talented, so no real shame uh, in those two losses. But if you took something from those fights, if you remember, uh, I did not like the fact that he was very hesitant in, that, in those fights, both those fights. I feel like if he would have upped the activity, he probably could have pulled... Um, pulled possibly both those fights off, or I believe that the Pantoja fight was the one that played out a little bit closer, if I remember correctly. Or excuse me, it was the Nikolai fight. Uh, I get both those fighters so so uh, mixed up. It's kind of funny. They remind me very much of of themselves, uh, Pantoja and Nikolai, uh, two 
well-rounded strikers with jujitsu skills. Um, but again, you know, Cape started off uh, slow to his UFC career. As of recently, we remember he had that flying uh, knockout, uh, flying knee knockout over uh, Odie Osborne. And then just recently, he had another uh, big victory over a uh, Zalgis Zumagalov, a very tough customer there. Um, but you know what? If, if you look into those victories, um, there's something that we do have to note. And that is that in both those fights, the Odie Osborne fight, although it didn't last long, uh, Odie was getting the better of the striking exchanges early. And the same could be said um, about the other fight as well. And, and that was against, excuse me, uh, Zalgis. I keep forgetting that name. That's a, it's a tongue twister. Zalgis Zumagulov, who's a very tough fighter. Um, Zalgis was landing some big shots early in that fight as well. But Manil Cape, you know, he was he was looking for that counter shot. We know he's explosive. And he, he did hit both those fighters with counter shots. But I worry a little bit about how his UFC career is going to go when he doesn't get the knockout. When he doesn't get that knockout victory, is, is he a, does his style translate to winning a lot of decisions? I'm not so sure about that. Like I said, he, he's, he's on the back foot at times. He's looking for that big shot. Uh, but he is super talented. Uh, when it comes down to the striking as well, when he starts mixing it up, he's very quick. Uh, he's very quick with his head movement and his counter shots. Um, I am a fan of his. I think that he's uh, a fighter that that could really tear things up. Uh, Sue Madarji, on the other hand, uh, a guy that comes in here into this fight with the four inch reach advantage, and uh, he's five foot eight. He's very lengthy for the division. He's a very polished striker. Uh, we saw him uh, get that not, that nasty knockout victory over Malcolm Gordon, and uh, he has potential to to light people up on the feet as well. Um, the problem in this fight for Cape is if he doesn't get that big knockout, I have a feeling that that Sue could possibly outpoint him here in this fight. And uh, and then on the other hand, another X factor is too is uh, I wonder if Cape looks to to use some some wrestling skills that he has that he really doesn't showcase all the time, possibly get a takedown on Sue and try to exploit the ground game of Sue, maybe go for a submission. Uh, we've seen Sue submitted uh, on the regional scene, you know, outside of the USC. And um, that, that is a possibility as well. There's a lot of variables in this fight. Uh, you see Sue over at American Top Team. Uh, one of the with, training with one of the greatest flyweights in the world, and uh, Adrian Adrian uh, Marias, uh, the one FC champion. Uh, that's always something that that's great to see. Uh, brushing shoulders with, with top of the line fighters. Um, now this is a fight that I've been very back and forth on. If I'm being honest here, um, I, I've settled in with the Manil, Manil, Manil K pick though. I think that he gets the job done. He could strike with Sue, and I think that if he put some urgency into this fight and presses, I think that he'll uh, it'll pay off for him as well there. I hope that he looks to do that, though. I hope he looks to close the distance. I hope he looks to move forward. I hope he doesn't get caught up in a counter-striking type of affair because uh, it could bite him. Uh, similarly to those those first two UFC fights where he got a little complacent and uh, ended up costing him two decision losses. Uh, now we look at the live line right now. A lot of action has been coming in on Manil Cape. He's now up to the minus 200 range uh, on some books, right around minus 190, where you could have got him earlier, right around minus 170, minus 160, minus 170. And um, it's a tricky fight. Um, I've been watching a lot of tape on both these guys. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, I think that Manil Cape gets a... Oof, does he get the knockout? Uh, I think there's definitely a possibility he gets the knockout here, but I think he gets the job done uh, overall. I could see him possibly winning a decision as well. Uh, again, maybe a submission. You never know. Maybe ground a ground and pound victory. We haven't seen Sue really tested down uh, down on the mat in the UFC. So let's see how that goes. Um, it, it'll be a fun fight. So we move from the men's flyweight division over to the women's flyweight division. This is an intriguing matchup here. Um, I'm a little torn on this on this fight here. I'll give you guys a little uh, sneak peek into how I feel about my pick here. Uh, Macy Barber potentially. Could be coming off three losses in a row. A lot of people thought that she probably lost that fight to Miranda Maverick. Um, that being said, even though she would potentially be on a three-fight losing skid, uh, fights against Miranda Maverick, Alexa Grosso. Grosso's been looking very good. And then the Roxanne Matafari fight, she kind of got injured in there. You guys know how that fight went, uh, but it wasn't a good look for her, but it is what it is. Um, you know, the Jillian Robertson and J.J. Aldrich knockouts and some of those fights, she start off, started off a little slow and then put it together. And that was a common theme, even in the Miranda Maverick fight. She looked good in the third round. Uh, she, she had some moments where she was pressing Maverick against the cage, landing some big shots. She was aggressive in the third round. 
But again, I thought that she did lose that fight, but she's fighting decent talent here. She's still only 23 years old. Montana De La Rosa, on the other hand, uh, Montana De La Rosa is coming off, a, coming off a big victory where she used her wrestling to smash Ariane Lipsky in that fight, bloodied her up, beat her down in there, got the stoppage. Uh, before that, she had a, a draw with Myra Bueno Silva, but do remember that that fight, uh, there was a point deducted from Myra, so Myra should have won that fight 29-28, but uh, you know, Montana did show to to be very tough in that fight and to to hang tough. She was bloodied up. She, her nose was broken. She was continuously coming forward. She's a very, very tough cookie. And uh, you see her putting in work here with Tisha Torres, Raquel Pennington, and Lauren Murphy. Um, that That's uh, great people for, for a female fighter to be surrounded by and training with. Uh, shout out to Tisha Torres and Raquel Pennington for both coming through for me uh, on official plays uh, just recently on UFC 273. Unfortunately, um, the judges did snub uh, Tisha Torres there, but whatever. Um, Montana De La Rosa, a high school wrestler. She's a solid grappler. She's working on her striking. Um, you know, if I'm being quite honest, I'm not a big fan of her boxing. She's tough or she has a decent jab, but her boxing's slow. I expect Macy Barber to get the better of those boxing exchanges. Um, although if, Monta if Montana sticks to the jab, she may have some success there. Um, you know, if Montana is able to start putting it together, uh, she she definitely has star power. I mean, she's 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 a looker. Uh, she's a great personality. Uh, we know that her husband is a former UFC fighter as well, Mark De La Rosa. I don't believe he's still fighting in the UFC. Um, Montana has some legit potential. She's only 27 years old, still very young. And uh, but but again, Macy Barber only 23. I expect to see more strides in her game. If I'm being honest, um, and this is a fight. Like I said, I've been back and forth on this fight. Uh, I actually, if I'm being honest with you guys, I, I was settled in with the Montana Della, Montana Della Rosa pick here not too long ago. I was rewatching some tape and, uh, you know, even just rewatching the, the, the Macy Barber versus Miranda Maverick fight, you know, Macy, she was tough in the wrestling exchanges. She, she had some, uh, somewhat takedowns throughout that fight as well. Um, although Miranda was right back up I mean, they were going back at it. Uh, she, she, she showcased to me some skills in that department. Enough so that I think that she can keep this fight standing enough and not be controlled and smothered by Montana De La Rosa. And I think that Macy Barber just has better boxing and she'll land those bigger shots. And I expect her to bloody up Montana here. Uh, the X factor is, is if Montana gets a hold of her, gets her taken down, <clears throat> and can put some work down on the mat. And maybe we see Montana fizzle, or excuse me, Macy fizzle a little bit there. But we'll slide over to bestfightodds.com and we'll check out the live line right now. Macy Barber, uh, you, you can catch... Uh, a line on her ranging from minus 175 up to the minus 200 range uh, with the comeback on De La Rosa, plus 155, plus 150 to plus 160, right around there. Uh, if you're taking Barber, I would feel a lot more comfortable grabbing her right around minus 175. Uh, I wouldn't want to reach too high with her. Um, I could see some pot some potential uh, with a dog value on Montana De La Rosa. If she could use that grappling... If you want to take a shot on dog there. But again, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, my guts is is telling me that Macy Barber is going to land some big shots and we're going to see more and more growth with, with the her overall game, with her being so young still. Uh, she might come out here and, and look phenomenal with her takedown defense and, and her striking might even, uh, or should even look better and better. Well, Montana De La Rosa is still a little slow with the boxing. Uh, that X factor is the, is going to be those those grappling and wrestling exchanges and how Barber holds up there. Um this is a fun fight. It's a tricky fight. I'm excited for it. I got Macy Barber to win it. Alexander Romanov, King Kong, taking on Chase, the Vanilla Gorilla Sherman. We got a common theme of the gorilla uh, involved uh, with the nicknames and whatnot. But these are two different fighters here. Uh, I think we all kind of know the deal here. Uh, Alexander Romanov should probably steamroll Chase Sherman. He, he probably will. Um, maybe I should erase probably. He will steamroll Sherman. Uh, it's very unfortunate, you know, because the initial matchup was Romanov and Tanner Bozer. Uh, Bozer just put a message out recently. Uh, he's very, uh, very disappointed that he couldn't make the walk for his 30 professional fight. He had a lot of momentum behind him. Uh, I'll give you guys a sneak peek. I actually, I was going to pick Tanner, the dog there, to to win the fight against Romanov. We've seen Romanov have issues in fights, especially like in the Esp Espino fight, uh, where if he can't take his opponent down and bully him down on the mat and use that ground and pound or sub them, if he can't bully them, 
uh, and they give him a fight back and they stuff some takedowns. His cardio is a little bit lacking and his striking is not the best. So if you keep the fight standing, you can definitely uh, outpoint him there. Um, his, his striking really uh, needs to evolve a lot more, a lot more. Um, he carries extra weight, which again, it does benefit him when he's on top of these guys. We know he's a decorated wrestler when he's on top, he's, he could smash these guys. He could smother them. Um, but like I said, when a fighter is going to give him some, some resistance, I think that he's going to have some problems, especially fighting, fighting the upper echelon fighters in the division. So he's going to have to round out his game. He's going to have to round out his striking. Uh, he has that, that awkward southpaw stance he kind of uh, is in and out fighters are worried that they're going to be taken down so he does have potential to land some big shots there as well uh, but but it's all about the takedown it's all about the takedown and he doesn't try to hide it he, he bullies in and, and smashes guys and that's exactly what i think he's going to do here i think he gets sherman down to the mat and smashes him um you know sherman as we see on his instagram he's putting in work over at sanford sanford mma it seems like he's been training he's been active he's in good shape he's been waiting for an opportunity like this um he knows that he's not one that could be too picky uh to, to get a full fight camp at this point in time he's you know he's been a, a struggling fighter he's on a three fight losing skid uh, losses to Jake Collier, uh, Parker Porter, Parker Porter, and uh, Andre Arlovsky. So he's coming into this fight right now as a plus 850 dog. Um, if Chase was really training and was specifically training his takedown defense and, and knowing a little bit of having some insight for a potential matchup like this and comes in and can stuff some takedowns and make Romanov work. Maybe he can win a, the striking exchanges against Romanov. But even then, I think Romanov gets the better of him on the feet anyway. Uh, but Romanov smashes him, period. Romanov wins this fight. He'll be 16-0 after this fight. He's 31 years old. Uh, but be careful for the hype train to be derailed moving forward. Um, that I do see happening. So Chase Sherman actually has a three-inch reach advantage and a two-inch height advantage. I don't really care about it. Um, the Moldovan is going to come in here and King Kong smash the, the fake gorilla and Chase Sherman. And King, uh, Romanov will prevail as the real, legit nickname gorilla King Kong. And uh, and we talked about the live the line. I don't need to pull up the live line. Actually, I don't think Best Fight Odds even posted it as of now. So uh, no need to go on anymore about this fight. And... Let me just be clear, too. I like Romanov as a prospect in the division. Needs to sharpen some things up. I'm still excited to see him uh, step into to future matchups as well. And we'll see if he can iron some things out and really make a run. But like I said, you guys know how I feel about it. We got a co-main event matchup of Clay Guida taking on Claudio Puelas. Interesting co-main event spot here. Uh, nothing but love to Clay Guida. Uh, I told you guys one of the, the wild stories that, you know, watching that Diego... Uh, Sanchez versus Clay Guida fight live. Uh, unfortunate situation for me. Got locked up for a night for some stupid stuff and uh, was in the pod after I got pushed in the pod. I uh, was able to uh, get Spike TV pulled up and was able to watch one of the most epic fights of all time. And the pod was going crazy in the middle of the boondocks. I was driving through Jackson County in Florida. It was a, uh, it was a wild, wild night there. Um, you know, and Clay Guida has always been a, a household name, always a fun guy to watch. I've always been a big fan of his, uh, but it was, it was surreal chilling with Clay Guida just recently at, over at BKFC, um, over here and, uh, down here in Miami and, uh, chilling with him doing shots, literally chilling with him. I'm talking about, I was sitting there talking to some people. I saw Clay. I told him a story about the story. I just told you guys about how that all happened. And, uh, he got a kick out of it. He thought it was pretty wild. And uh, he's like, yo, let's go do some shots. And me and him ran over. Me and my cousin did some shots with him. And uh, I mean, he wasn't just taking shots and on the run. I mean, he was legitimately chilling with us. Uh, he's just a, a cool dude, man. Uh, a really cool dude. And um, nothing but love and respect to Clay Guida. Um, he's just a regular guy. That, that's all Clay is. Uh, and, and, and he's a phenomenal fighter throughout his career. He's 40 years old, though, now. And, um, you know, I'm going to get into my selection here. This is a fight I'm very, very torn on. And especially after chilling with Clay and all that and him showing love, I definitely want to pick him in this fight. But you guys know how I do it. I do uh, stick to business when it comes to these fight picks. It's been tough throughout sometimes, but uh, it is what it is. Um, I am going to be picking Claudio Puelas to win this fight. And I'll go over why. You know, Puelas... Uh, there, there's a recipe for him to lose his fight, no doubt. This is a very, very close fight. If Clay can go in, use his grappling, and, and push the pace, use his wrestling and his grappling, I think he could take Puelas down and, and potentially uh, win a decision like that. Um, but at the, you know what? Claudio has shown me, you know, being a Peruvian fighter, a guy that 
really doesn't have a, a substantial wrestling background. He has shown to me that he actually has some decent offensive wrestling. Uh, not that I expect him to to be getting takedowns on Guida there, but he's been working on his overall wrestling. I think that at the younger age that he's at right now, we might see more growth from him. He might be able to stuff those takedowns of Guida, keep this fight on the feet. He has a decent body kick. He's been working on some combinations on the feet. It's it's nothing to go crazy about, but I think that he, he could potentially hurt Guida on the feet as well. Now, if we, if we remember in Guida's last fight where he did get the W against Leonardo Santos, he was almost finished in that fight. He was absolutely getting dismantled in the first round and Santos completely blew his load there and gassed out. And then Guida basically just beat a guy that was not able to lift his arms. Let's be honest how that played out. Um, the Mark Madsen fight, a very weird fight. They were on the feet the whole time. Madsen never even tried to use his wrestling, a very awkward striking uh, striking fight. Um, before that, the Michael Johnson fight, he was able to get the takedowns there. Um, Again, so Guida can go in here. He can get a take that, cut some takedowns. Can control the fight like that. He'll throw the overhand right. You know, he, he's active. He's using his footwork. Uh, but I think Puelos, Puelos, being 26 years old, being the, the more prime athlete, you know, he looks to be in phenomenal shape for this fight. I mean, he's putting in some real work. If you're following him on IG, I mean, this guy's really putting in some work. He's over at Sanford MMA. Uh, he's becoming a better and better version of himself. And he's just... Uh, he's the younger, more fre fresher fighter. And, uh, you know, Guida, like I said, he's been through some wars. He has so much so much uh, fight experience. Um, it could be a good thing or a bad thing here. It's really a close fight, but I got to stick to my gut, man. I think that Puelis can avoid being smothered in this fight and could edge edge the victory here. Although, again, I would not be shocked if Guida gets this fight. It's such a close fight. This is a, this is a straight pick em fight, in my opinion, with a very, very slight lean on Puelis for me. Just having that that the two-inch re, uh, reach advantage, being four inches taller, being the more lengthy, younger, fresher fighter, putting in work at Sanford MMA, I will edge him to win this fight. Um, but, you know, I'm rooting for Guida. I want Guida to win the fight. Uh, again, Guida is the real deal. If you ever bump into him, uh, tell him the teller sent you. And uh, he, he's legit. But uh, we take a look at the live line. We'll see if, what kind of movement we have here. Uh, it's still pretty much a pick em. We've seen Puelas open up as an even, uh, not a dog, I guess you would say. Yeah, an even dog. I guess technically it is a dog. Uh, work his way down to the minus 130 range, bump back up to minus 110. So people are on the fence with, with those grappling exchanges if Guida's going to smother him there. Um, real quick, if you remember the uh, Chris Grutzmacher fight, Puelas did pull off that knee bar, which he's shown to pull off that knee bar twice in the UFC. He has that in his back pocket, but if it wasn't for that knee bar, I'm not sure if he doesn't lose that fight two to two to one. So, and Gritzmacher is a similar fighter to Guida, similar type of fighter there. Um, and you know, towards that that third round, Puelas slowed down a little bit. He was taken down, but I guess do we say he slowed down because he still pulled off the knee bar? It was a weird fight. Uh, there's some legit potential for Puelas to to get grinded out here and, and lose the decision. So uh, I'm not really confident in the pick at all. I got Puelas though. I got to stick with my gut. Hey, you guys, if you're looking for a new sports book, you guys know the routine. Bavada.lv is my favorite sports book. Reach out to me. I'll give you my referral link. I'll give you further instructions, how to sign up and everything. And uh, you'll get a great bonus when you sign up. And I will give you my free official plays. Uh, I will give you my, my official plays free. Uh, you will not have to pay for them. You guys can see what my picks are all about. If you're not interested in that and you're just interested in my official plays, reach out to me. I'll give you my pricing. Would love to work with you guys. And uh, that's about it. All right. We hit the main event here. Amanda Lamoche taking on Jessica Andrash. And uh, two Brazilians here at different points in their career. Although uh, Lamoche is four years older uh, she is a girl that has a lot more to prove inside the octagon where, where Jessica Andrade has already been a champion. Um, even besides being a champion, she has proven to be just a, a household name in women's mixed martial arts. She's been in there with the who's who. She's fought at all different weight classes. Uh, I mean, she's what a, a future Hall of Famer, right? She's a future Hall of Famer. She's a legit, legit fighter. Carries serious power. She has grappling, wrestling. Um, she's a treat to watch. She has that that smaller frame, but she she makes it work. Um, I, I always enjoy watching her fight. She throws those power hooks from the hip, um, and she can knock anybody out. I mean that that fight over um, Rose Namajunas the first time around was uh, such a, a crazy finish. The slam. Uh, she's very physically strong, 
And then you got Amanda Lamoche, who is a, a very, very talented striker, carries some serious power in her hands as well. We've seen her getting some knockouts as of recently, uh, knocking out uh, Montserrat Ruiz and uh, also knocking out uh, Lavinia Souza, the, the gangster, um, the Brazilian gangster, right? Is that her nickname? I forget. But, you know, it. both those fighters, you know, below average fighters, uh, and Lavinia Souza and, and, well, Montserrat Ruiz, you know, the book's not out on her. She's a tough wrestler. Uh, and then in her last fight, she had that split decision victory over Angela Hill. Another tough loss for Angela Hill there. Um, you know, this fight's going to come down to, can, can Amanda Lamoche use her use her range? She has a three-inch reach advantage. She's, uh, uh, yeah, three-inch reach advantage. She's three inches taller. I think she's going to want to, She I know she's going to want to stay on the outside, try to pepper uh, Jessica up. Uh, she doesn't want to get into a brawl, in my opinion. Uh, Jessica will uh, have more pop on her shots. I do believe that. I think that Jessica can land the bigger shots there. But that being said, uh, if Jessica is not careful either, we've seen Jessica clipped as well. If you guys remember, of course, the, the Zhang fight um, that was, uh, what, two and a half years ago. Yeah. You know, she she got a little crazy in there, got a little reckless, and she got clipped too. So if Amanda comes in, you know, trying to brawl it out. I think that it doesn't favor her necessarily, but there's potential that she could land a big shot too and, and hurt Andraj. Um, I think that there is, there's legit potential for this to be a very, very fun fight. I think that these girls are going to bring it and this fight can go a, a couple different ways here. Um, at the end of the day though, I've been back and forth on this fight as well, but I got to back Andraj. I think you have to back Andraj. If you break down the tape on these two fighters and you take everything into consideration, Andraj still only 30 years old with all that experience. She's still uh, very, very much in the in the physical prime of her career. Uh, Lamoche is the older fighter here. She's almost 35, although she doesn't have as much mileage on her. Uh, Andraj has the fight experience. Um, you know, she, These are the types of fights that she goes in and wins typically as well. All right, and a lot of people can argue, I've heard people arguing it, that Angela Hill just took out Lamoche in that last fight, that she should have won that fight. It was a close one. Um, so, you know, this is a tricky fight. I got I to gotta back Andrade, the former champ. I, I carry a lot of, uh, a lot of respect when, when I talk about Andrade. I'm a fan of hers, and uh, I got to back her here. Um, and maybe we see Andrade get some takedowns and work in Lamosha's guard as well. That's the X factor as well. Maybe we see Andrade slam Lamosha down, uh, pepper her up in her guard, and uh, she maybe she wins a decision that way as well. Maybe we see her land a big shot. I'm back on my girl Jessica here. Uh, it, this is a fun fight, and we'll see what Lamosha is about here. Big step up in competition. Uh, we're gonna need to see more from her though. If she's gonna want to go out here and get a big victory like this and put a big feather uh, in, in her cap here. And um, it would be a big feather. It would almost be like a feather like this, hanging from the side. All right? So I do got the former champ, the future Hall of Famer, and Jessica Andrade to get the job done here and work her way back to some big fights there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap things up here. Hopefully this episode wasn't too long for you. I tried to make it a little quicker. Uh, of course, like I said, this isn't the biggest of fight cards. I know I'm getting this out to you guys late. Um, we'll see how many views we get on this video. It'll probably be a little bit of a weaker video here, but big things coming uh, for my closing thoughts, we'll throw out, quit the cigarettes. If you're still smoking cigarettes, if you relapse, you went back to them, quit the cigarettes. And uh, like I told you guys, please stick with me. I'm so eager to show you guys what, what we're on the verge of, of doing here with everything. And we're right in the midst of it right now. And it's been tough. Like I said, traveling, setting some new things up here. Uh, been on the road a lot. And, um, you know, we'll be buckled in for this fight card. Catch me on IG, MMA Fortune Teller underscore. Catch me on Twitter, the MMA Teller. The MMA Teller. Like this video. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. All right. And uh, we'll sign out. Signing out. Teller. Welcome to the show. This is the MMA Fortune Teller. Yeah. The MMA Fortune Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller.